What's up, you freaking geniuses? So let's talk about the medians of a triangle. So a median is just a line that goes from a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So here we could draw a straight line. Actually, the first thing we can do is just draw the midpoints of the sides of the triangle. So for this bottom side, we can say the midpoint down here is about here. On this side, let's say it's about here. And on this side, we can say the midpoint is about there. So a median just goes from the vertex straight to the midpoint of the opposite side, right? From the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. From the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. Okay, now when three or more lines like these intersect, we say that they are concurrent. And the point of concurrency, or in other words, the point where they all intersect, for medians is called the centroid. So this point right here where they all intersect, that spot is called the centroid. Okay, and fun fact, this is also known as the center of gravity. And it's important to point out that the centroid of a triangle is always located inside of the triangle. So for an acute triangle, you can see the centroid is on the inside. Uh, for a right triangle, we can draw it really quick. So from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side, right midpoint, from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side, from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So for a right triangle, you can see that the centroid is still right here inside the triangle, right? And same thing for an obtuse triangle. So if we draw all the medians here, there's one right there, there's one about right there-ish, and then one about there-ish. So again, you can see that they all intersect at a certain point and you can see it's still inside of the triangle. Okay, and the last thing I want to mention about the centroid is that it's located two-thirds along the distance of the median, okay? So you always start at the vertex and move towards the midpoint, okay? And the centroid is always going to be two-thirds of that distance. So for example, if this whole distance right here from A to, let's just call this D, right? So if the distance from A to D was three feet, then that means the centroid would be right here at two feet. Okay, and it's really important that you start at the vertex and move towards the midpoint, right? Don't go the other way around. Don't start at the midpoint and then move towards the vertex because then you would end up somewhere up here and that would be wrong. All right, so with that in mind, let's do our first example. All right, here's the first example we're gonna go over. So it gives us a triangle right here, triangle X, Y, Z. And then it gives us these lines right here that look like medians and we can confirm that they're medians because as you can see, it tells us that we have a bunch of congruent sides, right? So it says this side is congruent to this side. And that only happens if we split this entire uh, side of the triangle in half, right? So then we know that this point right here must be the midpoint. Same thing with this side over here. It tells us that these two sides are congruent. So that means this side or this point right here must be the midpoint. And same thing over here. Since these two sides are congruent, that means this point right here, B, must be the midpoint. Okay, so since we know these are medians, now let's go to the first problem. So it says XA is equal to eight. So XA is right here. So this distance from X to A is equal to eight. What is the length of XB? So what is the length of the total distance, the total median? Okay, well remember the distance from the vertex to the centroid is two thirds of the total length, right? So we know that this small distance XA, so we know that, let's do an orange, we know XA is equal to two thirds of the total distance XB. All right, now we know what XA is equal to, it's eight. So let's plug eight in. So we got eight is equal to two thirds times XB. Now to get rid of this fraction, we can just multiply by the reciprocal. So we can multiply by three halves on both sides. So times three halves on both sides. So on this side, uh, on top we have three times eight, which is 24. So we get 24 over two is equal to, and then on this side, the fractions cancel out and we're just left with XB. Now 24 divided by two is equal to 12. So we got 12 is equal to XB, all right? So if this short distance right here from X to eight is equal to eight, then the whole distance of the whole median is equal to 12. All right, not too bad, right? 
let's try one more. So this one says that CZ is equal to 17. So CZ is this whole distance right here, this median right here, and it's equal to 17. What is the length of CA? So CA is this short little distance right here. So remember, the distance from the vertex to the centroid is equal to two thirds. So if this is two thirds of the whole distance, that means the shorter side must be one third of the whole distance, right? So we know that this short side CA, so we can say that CA is equal to one third of the whole distance, which is CZ, right, of CZ. So then here we can say uh, that CA is equal to one third times CZ, which is 17. So we get that CA is uh, one third times 17. Plug that into your calculator, you'll get approximately 5.67, right? So the distance from C to A is approximately 5.67. All right, here's the last one. So it says find AB, so AB would be this side right here, if BD is a median of triangle ABC. So triangle ABC, and it says BD is a median. So BD right here is a median. Well, if we know that this line right here is a median, that means this is the midpoint, right? So we know that this side is equal, or in other words, congruent to this side. Right? So then in order to solve for x over here, we can just set these two sides equal to each other. We can simply say x plus 9 is equal to 2x minus 17. So then we can get all the x's. Let's move them to the right. So let's subtract x, subtract x, and then let's move the numbers to the left. So here we can add 17, add 17. So then those cancel out. So then all we're left with is 9 plus 17. That's equal to 26 and that's equal to 2x minus x is equal to 1x or simply just x. All right, so now that we know what x is equal to, now we can plug it in over here to solve for a, b. So uh, if we plug in a 26 right there, we'll get 26 minus 4 is equal to 22. So segment a, b or side a, b is equal to 22. Boom. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.